Yo, what is good, everybody? As some of you guys know, I finally picked up my dream car, which is a 73 Camaro, well, 70, 73. Anyway, finally got the car that I've always been wanting, and it is absolutely immaculate, and I've already got some parts here, and I'm just gonna do some general maintenance today. We're gonna do some, uh, some tuning up and kind of adding some small things to the car that I've been really wanting to add to the car since, like, the moment I got it. Like, I'm already starting to work on it, but like I said, it's pretty basic stuff, nothing super crazy. So today we're gonna be putting on some new stuff, taking off some stuff, we're putting on some new stuff, some engine work, little smile small stuff in the engine wise either way before we get started we do have a sponsor of today's video which is today's video is sponsored you by ridge wallet are you lazy uh-huh alone uh. are you tired all the time huh are you just all around a bad person uh yeah you haven't brushed your teeth today have you uh-uh it's noon uh. well let me introduce to you the ridge wallet it won't change any of those things that i just asked you but Ridge Wallet did give me a bunch of money to give to my dog so I could tell you about how good the Ridge Wallet is. It's slim. It's sleek. It's got a money clip for money. It holds things. Oh wait. Are you always tired of receipts and other things in your pockets? Well, fear no more, because the Ridge Wallet will make you stop doing all of that. It's available in aluminum, titanium, and carbon fiber, and has several different color options. So if you're tired of being a lazy and good-for-nothing person, mm -mm. get yourself a Ridge Wallet. You'll still be a lazy, good-for-nothing person, but at least you'll have a really cool and nice wallet. Real talk though, before this ad ends, I am gonna break the fourth wall. I've actually legitimately switched over to Ridge Wallet entirely. Like I don't have a regular wallet anymore. This is the only thing I carry. It's incredibly convenient. This is outside of my ad requirements. I have legit turned all my friends onto these. I got one for my dad and everything. Beats this not out of a traditional wallet, plain and simple. Super thin, super convenient. It's made my life 10 times easier. Not sitting on it, doesn't hurt my spine. I just throw it in my pocket and it's all convenient. RFID blocker stops people from like scanning your credit cards and debit cards. You have my word, this is a good product. You can ask anybody that's gotten one. I've heard zero zero complaints on them, they're the tits. So I put the link in the description for all you guys if you wanna check it out, but this is me being 100% sincere. Like I don't know another way to convince you guys otherwise. Like normally the ads are pretty funny like they were before, but this is a product I totally 100% stand behind. You got my word on that. Anyway, back to the video. So thank you very much. Now let's get the car in here and start working on it because that's, that's what I wanna do. Today we're gonna to be doing some like mild engine maintenance, like spark plugs, a little bit, adding a little bit extra oil, etc. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go and pop this open and let it cool off. Nice and hot. While that cools off, I got something like way cool to show you guys. Something that I told you guys that I absolutely have to have in the car regardless was a wooden steering wheel. Found this absolutely beautiful Gorgeous steering wheel, paid about $200 for it. So you get the knuckles, grooves, whatever you wanna call it, the grips in it. This is something that I talked about since like day one of my car, a wooden steering wheel. And it's, it actually looks like it's a really pretty color. The cool thing is about wood is that later if I decide that I wanna change the color, if I wanna go with like a darker color, I can stain this or I can finish this later. Um, it's got a nice little, feels like it's been shellacked. Feels like it's got a good shellac finish on it. If I ever want to later, I can just pull it off and then stain it or finish it later, or change the color of it. But I really like the way it looks. I like the, the polished aluminum center, the polished steel center. And this should be really easy conversion. I got this off eBay. So I'm gonna turn on a fan because it's hot. I'm gonna turn on some music because, well, duh, you gotta be listening to like ACDC and stuff. And then we're gonna install this. So, it's, uh, it's actually slightly bigger than the steering wheel that's in here now, which is fine. But now, without looking at any of the instructions, if I had to guess, since there's no airbag, this little horn just kind of pops off and exposes our hardware. I'm assuming just these three little things pop this off and the whole thing will come out and that should be attached to the steering column. It's got an adapter kit. Let's see what we got. Oh, nice, a, uh, an authentic Camaro center cap. Sweet, and then, uh, horn adapter, it looks like. Woohoo! Sends a little shock through you. <laughs> yeah.
Okay. Just gotta give her a good old yank. Figured what I would do is put like a, uh, a nice wrench on there and then turn it real good like. I think I just gotta remove these three screws and put on the adapter plate. the horn the whole time. That was actually more work than it needed to be. But the good news is while I was gone, some more stuff showed up. Right, so steering wheel's on and it looks awesome. It was actually more of a pain in the butt to put on than I thought it was gonna be. Like the instructions were pretty bad. Like I started to do one thing the way I thought it should be done and then I tried to follow the instructions but the instructions were like worded weird. Then I ended up just doing what I thought I was supposed to do anyway and it ended up working out, so. But well worth the time, effort, and money. Easy modification, done in a couple of minutes. Looks 10 out of 10, it's exactly what I wanted. And because of the kind of person that I am, I'm gonna take all the OEM parts and kind of keep them in a uh, in a box where I can have them like stored. I think I'm, actually what I'm gonna do is probably get a storage unit and just kind of keep your like original engine, transmission, drive shaft, all that stuff in there. Anything that I take off of this car, I wanna keep in its original form. That way, for whatever reason, if I need the OEM parts, I will have all of them. That's important to me. Did have this thing show up today, which is my front splitter. So I'm back the car up a little bit, get the fan and music going again, and then we'll install the front splitter. So at this point I realized that things weren't really bolting up the way I thought they should, and on top of that the front mold looked a little bit different so I checked my order. And I saw that I accidentally ordered the RS front end instead of just the standard Camaro. There is a slight difference, the RS being that it's just slightly wider in the front where the nose piece is, so the mold is slightly different. It's still bolted up pretty much just fine, however it did look a little bit off so I went ahead and ordered the actual one for my car, which you'll see me install later in the video. But for right now it works totally fine, and whatever, we're moving on to something else. Since I'm performing a pretty mild tune-up, I figured the first thing I should do would be to replace the spark plugs. So I made sure that the engine was cool, then I pulled the spark plugs that are in it now to replace it with some original AC Delco spark plugs. These are what would have come in the car back in 1973. Where's your uh, AC Delcos? And I don't know if these are gapped, but we want them to be gapped at about 035. What I've always done when it comes to uh, gapping spark plugs is basically just using my tool, I kind of smush it down a little bit and force it till it's around that mark that I want. And that usually leaves us with a pretty well gapped spark plug. Two down, six to go. 
That one looks pretty all right too. Seemed like the front two cylinders had pretty foul plugs. All right, let's see if putting some fresh spark plugs in or did anything for it. Now, I am not surprised that changing spark plugs can add a little bit of power to it, but I'm pretty sure we were only running on five cylinders previously. That added a good, it's got much better throttle response now. I'm assuming what the deal was is that two or three of these plugs have been fouled. You see these are wet, these three right here are wet. These front two being like the, the, the front two cylinders and then the uh, second to front left side, passenger side was also a little bit wet. These three look a little foul. I don't know how long these plugs have been in there. Auto light spark plugs look really old. I bet they've been in there for a while, but we're definitely running all cylinders now. It's got a lot more bang, dude. Like the down low acceleration, like zero to 30 is definitely noticeable. Is it fast? No, it is still not fast. If I were to put my money on it, I believe the timing is causing the issue. That's what my, I believe before I change the spark plugs, I just wanna go ahead and change the spark plugs anyway. Got a lot of sluggish pickup in the beginning. I think that a lot of it does stem from the timing. I think that the timing is just slightly on the retarded side, um, and I don't mean that in an offensive way. When you refer to timing, it's either retarded or advanced. All right, let me explain it like this. So timing is based on like when your ignition tells your car to fire, it's a, the, the spark plug. We're gonna go into like an old school lesson that I'm gonna try to explain to you guys like you're five. So, here's your spark plug, here's your piston. We'll refer to this point right here as top dead center. Top dead center is where your piston meets the top of its range. So your piston goes up and down. Top dead center is when it's all the way at the top, right? And then it comes back down. You have your four cycles, suck, squash, bang, blow where it intakes, it intakes oxygen and fuel, it's your intake. You have your compression stroke where it compresses, you're compressing all of your fuel and your oxygen together to create a nice explosion packed area. This is when your spark comes in, your spark plug fires, it ignites all of that fuel and air at the top of the piston and then it shoves that thing down and then you have your exhaust stroke where, where your piston comes back up, your exhaust valves open and it pushes all the remaining exhaust. So it'll go up, and it'll push all that exhaust out after you've blown up. You know, you have like tiny little explosions in your engine. So all that explosion exhaust will go out through the manifold and you, out your exhaust pipe. And then when your piston goes back down, it will suck in more oxygen and more fuel and get ready for the thing all over again. That's why they call these engines four strokes and like dirt bike engines two strokes. And you see, this is why timing is important. Timing tells your spark plugs when to fire. It's either advanced or retarded. Advanced means before the cylinder reaches top dead center and retarded means after. If you fire too far before the piston reaches top dead center, you'll get pre-detonation and basically your engine's fighting itself to keep itself running. It's a pretty good way to blow a hole in your piston pretty quick. If your timing is too retarded on the other hand, you'll have slow and sluggish response, poor gas mileage, poor acceleration, and really that's about it. It'll just be slow. Which this car does have some sluggish acceleration. So I've got my timing light, I'm gonna throw some timing at it and see if I can't get the response to pick up just a little bit. On to timing. I'm gonna try to get the timing right in this car. Now I've never been like super good with timing, It's not, or I've never been super bad with either, I just don't have much experience doing any timing. And I figured there couldn't be a more simpler way to adjust timing than these old small blocks. But I'll show you why I think the timing's kind of off. Watch how fast the car car starts up. It starts up almost instantly when it's a cold start. It hasn't been run today and I'm just gonna kind of back it up a little bit because I want the exhaust out of the garage. I'm pretty sure the timing is super delayed or retarded just because of how fast it starts up. It's instant.
made it worse. After throwing some more timing, we got plenty of power, I adjusted it a good bit, and I threw about 10 more degrees of timing at it from whence it started. And now we have much better throttle response. It seems to be idling a little bit smoother, it's definitely backfiring a lot less, and I don't think that I'm blowing any holes in my pistons anytime soon. And while I was at it, I went ahead and removed the splitter that doesn't fit. I think that did it. We got a little bit more power out of it with the timing adjusted and everything seems to be running good. There's no knocking, no ticking. For the most part, a lot better than before. Clean, smooth idle. Before it was having issues where it would take a minute to start up after it had been running and cold starting would start instantly. Now it's, it's pretty evenly distributed between the two. So I'm gonna call the timing good for right now. Hey, while I was working on another project, my real splitter showed up for this thing. Let's see, this one should mount up a little bit better. Cool, that looks way cooler. So happy that showed up. All right, and I also picked up some LED headlights for the 73. Easiest freaking swap I've ever done. That was super easy. I have not come across a simple plug and play headlight in a long time. God, that thing looks so gnarly. I do see a lot of people talking about this little slit in the grill here, right there, the little square. That's actually where your hood latch is. You just see there's like a little prong right there. Just pull it and the whole hood comes open. You don't even need to have like an internal hood latch. <laughs> Without the grill in it, it looks like a little vampire, like these little things. I mean, once the black grill shows up, it'll look really cool. Pop back in for now. Not satisfied with the way that looks. Go figure. Let's test out those headlights. bit better. Gosh, they look pretty neat. So my oil light's been on for the past couple of days. Actually, it's been a little bit longer than that. It's been like, uh, since I got the car actually, the oil light came on. So I'm pretty sure that the oil pressure center unit is uh, is blown. At least I hope that's all it is. So I got I got a, uh, a replacement one here. It's pretty simple. Goes out the back of the block like this. 
using your uh, remover tool here. And then this only turns on the light. Mine only has an oil light. Some of them have gauges. Some of the Camaros have gauges. Some of them have just the lights. I just have the light. But I originally tried taking it off with just a pair of pliers. That didn't work, so I went down to uh, advanced and got just a, uh, a uh, sensor puller. It's got really weird. It's like a really odd size. It's like a 22, but then it's got these like ridges that are made specifically for this kind of fitting. Odd. It's gonna be really hard to see. It's hard to see, but this thing right here, this little thing I got my finger on. Yeah, there we go. Right here is my unit, and I just need to pull it out. It shouldn't be in here super tight, but who knows? It looks like everything's been painted recently, so. The top came off when I was taking it off. Hopefully it was just busted anyway. Well, I saw myself do it. I wasn't sure if I did. Ripping out one of these wires here. That's the oil light, it's off. Yeah, buddy. Nice. That was an incredibly simple fix. And I only broke one thing in the process, which is a new record. Now, for the final and most important thing we're gonna do to the car today. No offense to Sparky's machines, but this play has gotta go. Although I do appreciate them greatly. I can't tell you how long I've wanted this. <laughs> oh man. Gnarly 73 to match the ZL1. This is so cool. Well guys, that's going to end today's Video. I've got so much more in the works that I've been working on while making this video that'll come as soon as possible But I want to say thank you guys for watching this this means the world to me right here Anyway guys, I'll see you in the next video